You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of our show, Jody Burchett from Saint State College talks about new admissions and more. I sit down with Jerry James with Shale Crescent USA and Cambridge Mayor Tom Moore and Parks Director Mike Edwards fill us in on Boomerama preparations, the pool opening, and a whole lot more. And ice cream. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to another brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Hope you're having a great day today. My first guest on this show is Jody Burchett. She is the Director of Admissions for Zane State College. Nice to meet you. Nice Good to, to have you on well, the show. Harry. So um, what does a Director of Admissions, admissions do? We talked about this. You do a lot more than your title would imply. Probably more than most people think. So <laughs> yeah. basically admissions and recruitment is sort of packaged together. So what we do a lot is go out to local schools, to different events to try to um, promote Zane State College, let people know what the steps of getting enrolled are. Mm -hmm. So get that application process mm -hmm. going, uh, answer any questions they have about programs that we offer, scholarships, financial aid, basically give them the whole picture of what they need to do. And then we kind of pass them on to the next person to go in through those steps and get them enrolled. So do we do a lot of those pre-enrollment activities. Are a lot of people intimidated when they come to enroll is that I mean do, do you see that pre-intimidation we do I think that people have a lot of questions and they're not sure who to ask or they're not sure if they're just supposed to already know that I mm -hmm. think with the internet and our website is fantastic mm -hmm. but sometimes people have questions that they can't find the answers to so we offer admissions appointments people can come in and sit down and speak with us to have all of their questions answered and get on the right path to what they need to be doing okay right now you're dealing with several things um, summer term options Absolutely. So summer's right around the corner. Yes, it so is. Uh, just because closer than we think. Exactly. Anymore. Exactly. Summer's a great opportunity for students who may be coming back um, from their other college to enroll. Mm -hmm. High school students who want to get a jump on classes before the fall starts. Mm -hmm. Maybe just get one or two classes out of the way. Or somebody who's interested in getting started but maybe is ready right now doesn't want to wait until fall classes. So we have a 12-week semester that's starting in May, May okay. 22nd, and then we have an eight-week semester that's going to start in June, June 19th. Okay. So both of those are going to take what we normally do in 16 weeks. A semester long class is normally 16 mm -hmm. weeks and it's going to condense it a little bit. So maybe not the best idea to go, you know, full time or take too many classes, but mm -hmm. if someone's wanting to get started mm -hmm. or catch up or mm -hmm. get ahead, it's a perfect time for someone perfect to start. For them. Then you look ahead to fall. Absolutely. So fall is the traditional college start term. Okay. So we start in August because we are on semesters. So August 21st is the first day of fall semester. So anybody that's a brand new student, we do offer a welcome week. So the week before classes start, they're going to come in and they're going to do a first year experience class. So that okay. class is going to really give them, I call it college 101. Yeah. Because yeah. it's one of those things that gives them the lay of the land, tells them what they need to know or what people expect them to know in their classes already. Mm -hmm. So get familiar with our email process our blackboard our you know all of the processes that they need to know and then they get started into their classes the that's next a great week, idea so. it's a break-in period kinda. absolutely so yeah. August 21st is when fall starts they can start in Zanesville we have full offerings in Zanesville and then of course we have our Cambridge campus mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. that has full programs offered there as well as prerequisites so if somebody wants to t start there and then go into a program in Zanesville there's a lot of different options for students what if someone would uh, doesn't want to come to a class classic setting. What, what about online? Is online available? So we are expanding our online offerings at Zane State. In the past year, for actually for the past I think two years, we've had a cybersecurity program that was fully online. So that was our first and only fully online program. Don't ever have to step foot in a classroom if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. This fall we are expanding that. We're offering three more programs that are fully online. So they're not new programs to Zane State. They're okay. degrees that we have already had. Okay. One of them is our business management program. So you can get that fully online or you can get it in the classroom. So you can do a combination of both with that one. So that's really, really flexible. Our most flexible program, business management. 
We also have health information management. So that's going to get more information about uh, billing and coding, the health chart process, things like that. That's mm -hmm. going to be fully online now. And then also we had, it used to be called administrative office professional. Now it's called office administration. Okay. So basically the same degree, it's that person that runs the office, that multitasker that needs to know all of those computer programs, how to schedule, how to book things, just that all, you know, all encompassing person. So that's what that degree is going to do. And that's going to be fully online for us as well. Okay. It it, do, you, do you find that people like the flexibility of online? I think people love the flexibility of online. We live in a digital time. Yes, we do. Everything's on the internet, and so, of course... And everything course, goes fast. Yes, so <laughs> classes are no different. So we call them, you know, ones that you can have your pajamas on and learn. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, your classroom could be your kitchen table, your bedroom, anywhere that you want to take those classes, you're going to have the flexibility to do those classes online. Taking so we're college, really excited. college courses in your pajamas. Absolutely. It's just a dream come true. Absolutely. It is. We we probably have about a minute and a half. How do you want to fill out our time? What would you like to go to? Um, we can talk about um, financial aid and scholarships. Okay. okay. Tell us about that. So the FAFSA deadline, so FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So basically, just the same way that you apply to college, you apply for financial aid. So that process can take place anytime. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have it all ready to go before you apply. You don't have to wait until you apply to apply for financial aid. You can do it anytime. So that's one of the main things that people are apprehensive about when getting started is, how am I going to pay for these classes? Mm -hmm. So you can file a FAFSA anytime. Our early file deadline was May 1st, but that does not mean that you can can't still file a FAFSA. We will always process FAFSAs okay. even if you file it during the semester that you're okay. already enrolled for. So never too late to do that. We also offer lots of scholarships at Zane State. So again, if that's you know something that you're interested in, that's going to be the money that is money you don't have to pay back when you're finished. So if you're eligible for a scholarship, it could be 200, it could be 2000, it could be a full tuition scholarship. We have everything. And one application gets you applied for all of those. So you can go to our website um, zanestate.edu and go under scholarships and you can apply for everything right there. All right. And, and that's appealing because, you know, a lot of folks, and we've got about 30 seconds, uh, you know, a lot of folks uh, don't know that that help is available. Absolutely. And it's for everybody. I think sometimes people think it's only for high school students coming out and mm -hmm. going to college, mm -hmm. but we have students of all ages and we have scholarships for everyone. So it could be for where you live, what program you're going into. So there's never you know, there's never a bad time to okay. apply and there's something for everyone. So you never know what you're going to get unless you apply, but it's free money that you don't have to pay All right. Back, so. You get a quality education close to home Absolutely. at Zane State College. Jody Burchett, the Director of Admissions for Zane State College, thanks for being on Talk of the Town thanks today. For nice to meet me. you too. Back with more Talk of the Town right after this. the town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great, great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. 
Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the classic difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Well, you know, we talk a lot about, and we're, we're really um, um, into the oil and gas boom, I guess you could say, in our area. My next guest has a lot to do with that, and he knows a lot about that. Jerry James is the president of Artex Oil Company, and he is also a volunteer for Shale Crescent USA. Good to have you on the show. Barry, thanks for having me. You know what? We, You and I talked uh, before we started filming for 10 minutes, and we could go on for a hours and hours, but um, give us your background. Well, I told you I appreciate King Bridge. Matter of fact, I was thinking about it when I drove up here this morning. I'm based out of Marietta, but exactly 40 years ago this week, I got my first job in the oil field working here in Cambridge, Ohio. And we talked about it coming full circle, and it really does. It comes full circle. I never thought when I spent time in Louisiana and Texas and eventually made my way back to Ohio, but I'd be sitting here 40 years later. Yeah. Um, what is Shale Crescent USA? Shale Crescent USA is a volunteer effort of people from southeastern Ohio and West Virginia. And as a result of this boom we've had in the oil and natural gas business, we think there's an opportunity to go further down the line and start to bring manufacturing jobs back to our area. So the whole focus is, is trying to get manufacturing plants that will be here for generations to create high paying blue collar jobs. And you said that there is a precedent in history to support that. Yeah, what's interesting when you look at it, and I have an old adage, you never understand anything until you have to explain it to somebody else. <laughs> and I grew up in Zanesville, which is a manufacturing town like Cambridge, mm -hmm. but I took it for granted that everywhere had manufacturing. But as I traveled in my travels in the United States, I realized how rare that was. Well, when you look at why Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania areas like that were huge manufacturing, is because early on, we had the energy. It mm -hmm. takes energy mm -hmm. to run a manufacturing plant. Mm -hmm. It takes molecules to make manufactured goods. Mm -hmm. We were the leading producer of oil and natural gas in the late 1800s, and that's why we had a lot of manufacturers that traditionally were here. And we're hoping to bring that full circle and come back to where we are today now that we are now again a leading uh, energy producer to bring jobs again here the same way. You were talking about percentages, uh, especially dealing with, and this is what we're most concerned with high West Virginia, Pennsylvania, but you said from the, the, the initial onset to where we are now, the percentages have really climbed. Yeah, if you look at, people always ask, well, what's changed? Because we've always produced, you know, oil and natural gas here. You know, I got my first job here 40 years ago. But when this decade started, Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania produced a little less than 3% of all the natural gas in the United States. And keep in mind, natural gas is what manufacturers use to run their plants mm -hmm. and make products. Mm -hmm. At the end of last year, we produced nearly 30%, and most experts think within five to 10 years, we'll be at 40% of all the natural gas produced in the United States is going to be produced here. We've also propelled the United States to be the number one natural gas producer in the world. In the world. In the world. Wow. So, okay, for the folks out there watching, you know, how does that translate into the workforce? What do you foresee? Well, when you look at it and everything, there's a huge building boom that's going on. If they're probably the biggest building boom of anybody's lives on manufacturing plants is occurring because of this renaissance in energy production. The American Chemistry Council, which is the trade association for the petrochemical plants, they keep a chart, and since this decade started, there's $168 billion worth of plants being built in the United States. I was in Houston about a month or so ago. Uh, the Shale Crescent hosts the opening conference of the International Petrochemical Conference. People, speaker after speaker, got up and said they've never seen anything like this in their lives. Mm. What we want to do is get a lot of that manufacturing boom, and we've gotten a little bit of it, but we want to get more of it to come from the Gulf Coast of the United States and come back here mm -hmm. since we're the major supplier of the energy to create high paying blue collar jobs. Do you foresee that happening? We're working really hard on it. And that's what you do is, that's is exactly you what try, the volunteer to try to effort. entice them to come back. Exactly. What we're trying to do is, you know, most people working today for 75 years the Gulf Coast, ever since mm -hmm. World War II, mm -hmm. supplied natural gas from the Gulf Coast up here to the Appalachian Basin. That's which direction the pipelines flowed. We are now reversing the pipelines and we're now supplying them. So since we're the source of supply now, 
we want to see more of the manufacturing jobs come here just like traditionally they've got them manufacturing jobs. Wow, that is phenomenal. So uh, not only is, uh, is it a physical move, is it more of a mindset change, getting people to think us? It, it is. It, it's both physical assets and it's a mindset too. Um, you, know, uh, you know, my first job, full-time job, was working in Corpus Christi, Texas on the Gulf Coast. And I always jokingly say when I lived down there, and I'm, I'm from Ohio, and I used to tell people I was from Ohio, I had a concept that people from South Texas had no idea where Ohio was at. <laughs> They either Probably thought not. I lived in Iowa because it sounded like Ohio, <laughs> or they thought I lived right outside of New York City. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's a mindset mm -hmm. of getting people, letting them know that we're this huge supply of natural gas, that we have water and there are large rivers up here that can support major petrochemicals. It's letting them know that over 50% of the North American population lives within a day's drive of this area. It's letting them know that traditionally, particularly Southeast Ohio, West Virginia, Western Pennsylvania, we have people that are used to working with mm -hmm. their hands, that are working mm -hmm. in a manufacturing mm -hmm. plant, and that we welcome these type facilities. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a little bit of an education process, and then they have some concerns on infrastructure that needs to be developed to accommodate their plants, but we're very fortunate. The Shell's got the plant starting in Western Pennsylvania on mm -hmm. the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. There's talk that maybe we'll get the PTT chemical plant in Belmont. You know, it looks studies have been done. Pennsylvania just finished a study that there could be five more of those plants built. Oh, that would be awesome. And every plant generates thousands of high paying jobs. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to get is get our fair share. And it will change the landscape forever. It, mean, will. it will. It'll be multi-generational. In a positive, positive yeah, way. Right. We've got uh, less than two minutes. You wanted to talk about, if folks are interested in, uh, you know, shale development, all of this, you've got an event coming up. Yeah, we have an event that's going to come up a couple weeks in uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia, because we're agnostic. We're working both sides of the mm -hmm. river on this. We all need <laughs> to work together. We're not competing against each other. Mm -hmm. We're just competing against the rest of the world. But uh, Coach Huggins from WVU is going to be the keynote speaker at an event down to Smoot Theater in Parkersburg, West Virginia. And it's going to talk a little bit more about what we've talked today, just to let the public know what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's interested in tickets, I think they can go onto our website, shalecrescentusa.com, okay. and contact us. And uh, it, tickets are free, and we welcome people to know what's, what's happening. And it's just going to be a way for folks to sit down and listen and, and find out for themselves what's going on. That's right. And the other thing is it surprises me is how connected people in the world are now. Mm -hmm. It never amazes me that somebody either has somebody they grew up with, went to college with, and their family that may have some influence on companies looking to locate here. You know, we try to let people know how just big this is. You know, I said that uh, United States is now the number one producer of natural gas in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Russia's two, mm -hmm. Canada's three, a cutter in the Mideast is four, and mm -hmm. Iran's five. Mm -hmm. That's over half of all the gas produced in, in the wow. world. But if Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania formed our own country, we'd be the number three natural gas producer in the world. We might have to think about that. Jerry. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, hopefully, will you come back and, and sure. talk more about this? Appreciate the opportunity. Jerry James, the president of Artex Oil Company and also a volunteer for Shale Crescent USA. And keep that meeting in mind and go online to their website and find out more about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure to talk to you. Good talking to you. Hey, when we come back, we're going to be talking with uh, uh, Cambridge Mayor Tom Moore and Parks Director Mike Edwards. That's going to be a great segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home, locally owned since 1924, has earned the confidence of families they serve in the area. They provide quality service to the area every day and understand at the time of need you want to find comfort in dealing with folks that know you and honors your faith and customs. You'll get straightforward answers on prices, services, and pre-planning. You'll find they offer a variety of options to personalize your funeral service. See Chris Gibson, Jim Law, or Jacob Coe at Bundy Law Funeral Home. The Old Country Law features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. 
Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. Welcome back to Talk of the Town coming to you from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And I told you you're going to be glad that you stuck around. I think so. Because we never know what's going to happen when we have Cambridge Mayor Tom Moore and Parks Director Mike Edwards on the show. Good to see you guys. He's worse than And I'm telling you, we never know what's going to happen. He's a Lions happen. Club well, legend. That's right, because we never know either. <laughs> hey, as long um, as he don't wear that stupid outfit and walk in here and sit beside me, we're good. Nah, I'll be all right. We may have to book that sometime. But we were, we were we'll just sitting okay. here talking, uh, and I always like to stay positive on the show. You were talking about positive things. We want people to know the positive things that are going on in our area. I tell you, well, I... Just look around. I know we get caught up in looking at the front page sometimes, and we see somebody in a jumpsuit, and that's a sad situation. Mm, it is. But truthfully, jump on downtown here and look around. Right out the window, there's a new bank. That brightened up the corner. You go on down the street, we got a new dress shop. we got coffee shops. we got uh, real estate places brightening up the buildings, the area agency moving around, professionals moving around. Uh, it well, just, it just, it's picking up. We got a new dentist office being built down the hill. Uh, Police th department's going to be right over Fifth here. Fifth Street paving projects around the corner. We're going to have some sidewalks leading out to the park. Uh, Dewey Avenue's behind it within a year. Uh, the new hotels came in a couple years ago. Of course, they're starting to book up for the activities mm -hmm. of summer. Sure. Uh, we're here to talk about Boomerama a little early because we got to get ready. And but I'm telling you, pools getting ready to open. The holiday weekend, spring cleanup. Grass mode. I just want to add one thing okay. that you mentioned. Before You're not allowed we, to talk. Before, it's for me. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the positive well, we thing, you, you talked about seeing uh, people in orange jumpsuits. That is a positive thing because the police department, the sheriff's department, and everybody is cleaning this place up, which it needs That's to. Right. Yeah. Exactly right. And, and that is true, but... I guess I go deep. I see the full circle. Yeah. I want these people to jump out of those suits and, and become a and positive. And become positive And if they influence. can't, they need yeah. to go away. Exactly and, and right. that's the way it is. Well, let's talk about Boomerama. 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 Boom. What's going on with Boomerama right now? Well, we're, is lit. we're starting a little early, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we need to under, tell the story. You know, this wasn't just because the park and the city's got it now. don't mean it's an automatic. And I think we've kind of fell asleep a little bit last year based on the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a couple of outstanding years. Mm -hmm. And I admit it, I increased the budget <coughs> to uh, add a little pizzazz to things. And we hit the, last year, we hit it. I mean, 20, yeah. oh, a little over $20,000, $22,000, worth of fireworks went up. We need to raise about $20,000. And I'm, I'm pulling the covers back and I'm laying it on the line. Uh, that don't happen by accident. And it's always been a public show. The city has no money in it. Uh, we can't keep doing what we're doing. Uh, we fell about to $7,000 short last year. Yeah, you can't do that. And yeah. we got ahead. I, I think we all got gas and oil came and a couple big moments, and someone gave $5,000. And I don't think we got a little lazy. I mean, maybe we no, – was it us? So. I don't. I hope not. But uh, didn't feel like it. But anyhow, <laughs> so we had our little group get together and had our shooter in and uh, talk to you guys and talk to Jeff and just trying to re and Karen. Of course, Karen's a big cheerleader out mm -hmm. there. So yeah, she is. Here we are. Here we yeah. are. So let's switch gears and go to the park. What's going on uh, with the park? What's I know you guys are getting ready for the big summertime rush and tie oh. that in with Boomerama. What you're doing there? Uh, it, it's spring and and again, like everybody else, we're challenged. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a little bit short on people, which puts a lot on the guys that are here. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the summer help that we normally hire when school's out, we've already got four working. We've got two more coming, so we're okay. trying to ramp that up. We want to be ready for Memorial Day yeah. uh, because someone mentioned the pool, and that is when people like getting wet. Yeah, uh, is that when the pool is going to open? It's going to yeah. open Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we've got a guy out there today sandblasting some things, going to do some painting, some cleanup. Uh, we've done some concrete work and some improvements there. 
Uh, so it, it'll be ready. It'll be ready for Memorial Day. Ball fields. And when you deal with the city or you deal with the park or the pool, it's always an improvement thing because you've got a lot of upkeep, don't you? Well, the, the, and that's the thing. Sometimes people confuse upkeep with improvements because uh, there's always been a concrete apron around the pool. Sure. Well, that's, that's an expected thing. It's yeah. there. You don't want to yeah. walk around the mud. Yeah. So this year <laughs> we tore out a section of 20 by 60 feet of concrete that was just bad and deteriorated, need replaced. Uh, so that's done. We got a new place there, a new, nice new pad, uh, and that's good. Uh, so the pool will be ready. Uh, one thing I want to throw in, and I just uh, just got this. Uh, Steve Lau and, uh, and Chris Bredo have been working hard. We got uh, Parkside Tasty, Tasty Treat, Treat open. Mm, good. And something that he just handed me today, uh, there's a company out of Buffalo, New York, called Perry's Hand Dipped Ice Cream. Oh, yeah, I didn't want to take credit for that, but well, I mean, you know, I just, well, I, I didn't want it, that to get out for it, tax reasons. But yeah, I mean, it might know. be spelled a little different, but we're not going <laughs> to worry about that. Uh, and they just brought this stuff in today. There's nobody else in the area that has this, and it's delicious. Great. Stuff. Uh, have you sampled it? Uh, no, I haven't yet. Well, I say, he just unloaded it okay. just an hour okay. ago. Uh, yeah. Queen, Queen of Hearts, Oh My Cherry Pie, uh, <laughs> Piece of Cake, uh, Movie Time, which I presume is, is actually like a buttered flavor, like a buttered yeah. popcorn, yeah. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. peanut Ooh. butter swirl, bubble gum, all kinds of different flavors that nobody else has. Butter and ice cream. I don't know. I, suppose well, I'm I, I think it would go, I think. Yeah. But that's I available out of Parkside, right? Popcorn. right. Well, just lost the audience. Available. They all want to eat. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so Parkside is open. Good, uh, we'll great. be expanding the hours great. as the season changes. Yeah. Uh, but they are open now, and, and it's it's going well. So we've got some new things out there, too. Well, when we talk about the pool opening, we talk about Boomerama. We're talking about summertime's almost here. Little League Baseball is yeah. fired up. Don Cost Baseball is around the corner. New batting cage. Uh, new structure changes around Don Cost Field to mash up with what they already done. And we try to do a little bit each year. Pickleballs, the picklers are showing up and uh, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> Well, they are. They are. It's, I yeah, mean, it's, some it's of them growing. Do. It's growing. I mean, it's growing. It's, yeah, it, when the picklers crazy. are showing up, you know it's growing. Well, that's well, it is. They <laughs> had some of them on the softball field. Uh, uh, and again, talking about improvements, I wish we had more space. Yeah. Because yeah. that's yeah. a group that is that is sorely challenged to play in a small area. Tennis. And there's people. We got about 30 seconds. Uh -oh. How can folks make in 30 seconds? How can they make donations? To Get the online. Park? Cameron City Park. Your radio. Uh, your plate of gross has got it. You guys have got it. Uh, we'll have more coming forward. We just want to reach out to everybody. Anyone here is this. Put five, ten, twenty-five yeah. in an envelope. Helps. Yeah. Ear market. Help. help us out this year. Okay. We could use the help. The little donations make this thing go over the top. Okay. We had some bigger ones jump in last year, but the little ones. And Terrific. take those words to heart. Make those donations. Terrific. Cambridge yep. Mayor Tom Moore, Parks Director Mike Edwards. Can't wait to have you back on. Great. Because it's always a blast. Always help always us help blast. you yeah. blow it up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Boom. Bam. We'll be back with, to wrap it up right after That's this. I don't know what We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home, locally owned since 1924, has earned the confidence of families they serve in the area. They provide quality service to the area every day and understand at the time of need you want to find comfort in dealing with folks that know you and honors your faith and customs. You'll get straightforward answers on prices, services, and pre-planning. You'll find they offer a variety of options to personalize your funeral service. See Chris Gibson, Jim Law, or Jacob Coe at Bundy Law Funeral Home. That's going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. I knew we were going to have fun with Tom and Mike. I knew that. Thanks you for watching, and thanks to our guest, Jody Burchett. 
uh, Jerry James and Cambridge Mayor Tom Moore and Mike Edwards. For the best and local latest news, sports, weather, area events, local programming, including Talk of the Town, log on to yourradioplace.com now with a mobile-friendly format, so it's very easy to use on your smartphone. Yeah, check it out. For producer-director Adam Green, he's really, really Scott. I'm Perry Bronich. We'll see you next time on Talk to the Town. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a a great great place to live, work, and play. You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9.